Rajiga, you may know, has made a daunting list of many wonderful and always innovative movies. I'm only going to name a handful of them, making sure that you have seen them <laughs> because they are wonderful. Mother and Child, Nine Lives, which he shot in every, every one of the short stories in Nine Lives, he shot with one single take, one long single 15 minute or so, 10 minute or so take. Astonishing work. Oscar nominated Albert Knobs, things you can tell just by looking at her, and the long running HBO series In Treatment. He also does tons of pilots, which are always so good. If you can get him to do your pilot, you are, you're in clover. Um, he also write, wrote a movie that I want you to see that is called Last Days in the Desert. And in fact, just yesterday in a writer's room that I'm working in right now, someone brought up his film. And that room launched into a half-hour discussion of Last Days in the Desert. It's a haunting movie. Um, it's quite original. It stars Ewan McGregor, and it's streaming on a number of sites. You can buy it on Amazon. Your homework of the night is to go home and see this extraordinary movie. So after that embarrassing buildup, I'm going to give you Rodrigo Garcia. Thank you very much. I am humbled by that introduction, but humility is my favorite form of vanity, so I'm okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Don and Robin. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, everyone, even those of you who would rather watch a movie than write a movie. Count me among you. Where are our writers sitting today? Ah, very good. So here's a story I heard from the genre of anecdote. A very well-to-do elderly lady from Colombia was traveling with her dog from New York to Bogota. Upon arrival, the container and dog were nowhere to be found. The lady was well known and a close friend of the owner of the airline. So the news reaches the president of the airline and heaven and earth are moved in the search for the dog. After 36 hours, the container is finally found in a remote airport, but inside the little dog is found dead, already starting to decompose. A desperate middle-level airline executive suggests that perhaps another dog can be found that resembles the deceased dog. And that given her age and failing senses, the owner might not notice the difference. In a panic, the plan is put into motion and executives show up at the lady's apartment with the new dog. She takes one look at it and says, that's not my dog. My dog was dead. I was bringing it home to bury it. <laughs> so this story contains some good themes. Emotional attachment, loss, class, and privilege, death, respect, and disrespect for the elderly, and perhaps, greatest of all, human folly. But it's best told quickly because it has holes, and I won't point them out. They'll come to you on the way home. Here's another story from the genre of personal history. My father, who was the author of the novel 100 Years of Solitude, died age 87 at noon on a good Thursday. He had been back from the hospital for a few days and doctors had already prepared us for the worst outcome. A few hours before noon, earlier that same morning, a bird was found dead inside the house. What was once a terrace had been enclosed a few years earlier to make for a sitting area overlooking the garden. The walls are glass, so it was surmised that the bird flew in became disoriented, crashed against the glass, and fell dead on the sofa, more precisely on the spot where my dad regularly sits. My father's secretary informed me that the employees in the house and office were divided into two groups. Those who think it's a bad omen and want the bird th thrown into a trash can, and those who think it's a good omen and want the bird buried among the flowers in the garden. The trashists have taken the upper hand and the bird is already in a garbage can outside the kitchen. After further debate, the bird is placed in a corner of the garden, above ground for now, while its final destination is decided. Nobody outside the house knows anything about the dead bird. A few hours later that same afternoon, shortly after the news of my father's death is made public, his secretary receives an email from a friend she hasn't talked to in a long time. The friend wanted to know if we were aware that Ursula Iguaran, one of my father's most famous characters, had also died on a good Thursday. The friend has included in her email a passage from 100 Years of Solitude. 
And in rereading it, my dad's secretary discovers that after Ursula's death, disoriented birds flew into walls and fell dead on the ground. She reads me her friend's email and looks at me puzzled, perhaps hoping I am foolish enough to venture an opinion on the coincidence. I don't. All I know is I can't wait to retell it. This second story has some good themes too. Premonition, coincidence, destiny, death, and the invisible strings that perhaps bind everything together in the universe. And of course, the marriage of life and storytelling. Now here's a brief one, something from the genre of scientific writing from the book Homo Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. I quote, six million years ago, a single female ape had two daughters. One became the ancestor of all chimpanzees. The other is our grandmother. Wow. <laughs> what a story. From one of these little creatures who shall remain forever unknown and unknowing, and from her mate, who perhaps would have been less willing had he foreseen the consequences, from them flowed the vast torrent of people that brought us love, cathedrals, rice noodles, war, music, and justice, paintings of water lilies, babies laughing, suicide, the World Cup, sexting, banking, high heels, and an incalculable number of individuals all the way to here to Malala and Donald Trump. The dog story has two terrific elements, surprise and humor. It's a fine, it's a fine enough one night, sta one night stand, but it's no love affair. The second and third stories offer the most rare and powerful of elements, mystery. Why that bird on that day? Why that baby ape? Why her? The more your story works, the more it makes sense, the more grounded it is, I think the more mystery it needs. So that is my recommendation to our winners today beyond my congratulations. Keep mystery in your stories, something something always, always something unknown and unknowable. Beyond the ostensible motivations of your characters, beyond cause and effect, beyond the tears shed trying to solve the second part of the second act, beyond the ruthless notes of executives that demand that everything be explained and early and quickly and twice, <laughs> a good story should always include something about the depths of the human soul and of its most closely held secrets and about the infinite universe and of our short and puzzling time on this planet. So, that's the challenge, people. Stories both grounded and mysterious. Good luck with that. Thank you. Sadly, the part of the ceremony that is about me is over. So let us greet our players this evening. She recently starred in the feature film, Before I Fall. Her credits include Why Him, Everybody Wants Some, Dirty Grandpa, Beautiful Creatures, and the upcoming The Year of Spectacular Men and Set It Up, Zoe Deutsch. She most recently starred in Beauty and the Beast and the television series Black Mirror. Next, she'll be appearing in God Particle and A Wrinkle in Time. <coughs> Other credits include Miss Sloan, Beyond the Lights, Gugu and Bata Raw. <laughs> he currently stars in the HBO series Westworld and recently completed work on the Cuban feature 1989. His other feature credits include Fo Focus, 300, Rise of an Empire, and Love Actually, Rodrigo Santoro. <clears throat> in, in Love Actually, Rodrigo played a handsome man with the help of prosthetics. <laughs> An actor, producer, and screenwriter, Widely known for his leading roles in Hacksaw Ridge, Wedding Crashers, among many other movies. His other credits include The Internship, Into the Wild, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Most recently, he starred in Brawl in Cell Block 99, 
Vince Vaughn. Okay, 